Over the last week, there's been nearly 100 people shot in Chicago. Gang violence has been a problem in Chicago for a very long time. I used to live in Chicago, and I saw the shootings firsthand. So I know exactly who's responsible for the shootings in Chicago. But pro-blacks are making these conspiracy theories on social media. They're saying the white man is secretly sneaking into the black neighborhoods, killing black people and stealing their organs and blaming it on the gangs. This is what pro-blacks are saying on social media. Now this conspiracy theory is going around on Facebook, it's going around on YouTube. What bothers me about a lot of pro-blacks is they don't want to speak against the gang. They don't want to speak against the thugs. Because this goes against their talking points that everything is the white man's fault. This goes against their talking points that everything is the white man's fault. So they have to make up this conspiracy theory that white people are secretly sneaking into black neighborhoods and killing black people is still in their orbits. There's no facts to support this whatsoever. This is how ridiculous the pro-blacks in today's generation have gotten. They've turned into a joke. It's almost like they only care about black lives unless it's a white person doing the killing. But when black people kill black people, they don't give a shit. There's a genocide going on in Chicago. And all it would take to stop the violence in Chicago is for us as black men, us as older black people, to speak to these young people and stop, tell them to stop killing each other. Mentor them and tell them to stop killing each other. That's all we have to do. But these fake ass black leaders in the black community won't do that. They won't speak against the gangs and they won't speak against the thugs. Because this goes against their political narrative. If you look at the statistics, 96% of black people who are killed are killed by other black people. Less than 4% of black homicides are committed by white people. Less than 4% of black homicides are committed by white people. But black liberals and pro-blacks were rather focused on that 4% that are killed by white people than focus on the 96% that are killed by other minorities. And this goes to show that a lot of these black leaders don't give a shit about black lives. It's almost like a black life only has value unless you're killed by a white person. Most of these black kids being killed in Chicago are being killed by other black people. So their lives don't matter. You're not going to see Black Lives Matter go to Chicago and protest the killings in Chicago. Because these are black people being killed by black people. They don't give a shit if it's black people being killed by black people. This is how I know Black Lives Matter is full of shit. This is how I know pro-blacks are full of shit. If you only care about black lives when it's a white person killing a black person, then you don't give a shit about black lives. You only care about black lives when it fits your political narrative. You only care about black lives when it fits your political narrative. Now, I wanted to examine this organ harvest conspiracy theory. This conspiracy theory is going on across black pages on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter. And it's being spread like the gospel. There's nothing wrong with having a theory, but you have to have facts to support your theory. There's no facts to support this theory. This is why I'm calling bullshit on it. What bothers me about pro-blacks, instead of addressing the problem of gang violence in the black community, 
They want to completely ignore gang violence and act like the white man is responsible for all of this. And the reason why they don't want to address gang violence is because it goes against their talking points. It goes against their white supremacy talking points that the white man is to blame for everything. When I first heard this conspiracy theory, I was laughing my ass off. And I couldn't believe that some people were actually taking it seriously. When I started seeing people in the comments section actually taking this seriously, it was no longer funny. Because it goes to show that there's so many weak-minded people out there. It goes to show why Alex Jones had so many followers. Alex Jones had over 5 million followers on YouTube. And when I see a lot of pro-blacks preaching the same bullshit that Alex Jones is preaching, it goes to show how hypocritical they are. They're always saying they're against the white man, they're against white supremacy, but they're preaching the same bullshit that Alex Jones is preaching. They're preaching the same conspiracy theory bullshit that Alex Jones is preaching. This organ harvest conspiracy theory is straight out of the Alex Jones playbook. So when I see a lot of these pro-blacks on YouTube and social media saying they're so against the white man, they're so against white supremacy, but you're preaching white supremacy talking points. Everything that comes out of pro-black's mouth is a white supremacy talking point. You notice anytime a black person disagrees with pro-blacks, they will call them a coon. They will call them a house nigga. They will call them a sellout. These are all slave words. These are all slave words that were created by white supremacists. Our black ancestors were called coons during slavery. Our black ancestors were called house niggas during slavery. But these same pro-blacks who say they're against white supremacy are preaching white supremacy talking points. This is how hypocritical they are. They're not pro-black, they're anti-black. I'm only calling them pro-black because this is what they call themselves. But if you actually listen to what pro-blacks are saying Nothing they're saying is a pro-black point of view. Pro-blacks will preach more hatred against other black people than they do against white people. They hate black people who disagree with them more than they hate the white supremacists. And when I see all these black YouTubers trying to copy Tyreek Nasheed, it's just sad. I used to be a huge fan of Feel on the Advice Show. He used to make great videos that were very positive. But the last six months, he's tried to copy Tyreek Nasheed. He's tried to repeat Tyreek Nasheed's talking points. The last six months, he's preaching the same bullshit that Tyreek Nasheed is preaching. All these ridiculous conspiracy theories that have no merit. And he's trying to pander to the pro-black audience on YouTube. And I think it's really shameful to see him go down this route. Instead of being himself, he's trying to be like Tyreek Nasheed. And I think that's very sad for him to go this route. A lot of people have different opinions about this topic. Leave a comment, rate, and subscribe.